to begin to understand the history of the production of art by African Americans in the 20th century, that they go and get Robert Ferris Thompson's book called Flash of the Spirit. What I think about Ellis Rooley, it's hard to compact it because he's a very important guy. Why I think he's an artist, not with any adjectives, an artist like Degas, like Rouault, an artist, period. So we get him out of all these ghettos and into where he is, if people would just see it in the mainstream of uh, Western art. But uh, this guy is real. The other thing I like about him is that uh, he's an outdoorsman and he fits into a lot of painters. Uh, it's been suggested that if you're a kind of meditative guy, you'll go into landscape. Well, he must have thought a lot because his landscapes read like trees turning into confetti. And that, that to me is one of the aspects of his art that comes uh, where he shows his blackness. Uh, blacks are riff culture. He must have been listening to blues. He must have been listening to something black, even in, in damn near all white, lily white, Norwich, Connecticut. Look at the work of Ellis Rooley. At first blush is his work which is very simple, very direct, very accessible. Uh, and yet, if one looks a little more closely, one may find darkness at the edge of what otherwise seems to be great pleasantness. This is a man who's living in an unnurturing and unfriendly environment. So the work, though it has a pleasantness to it, a seeming easiness, it turns out to uh, have another side, an edgy side, uh, a darkness. Uh, so much of the work seems to reflect impending disaster uh, in a way that sets us at ease, that brings us to the edge of our, our chairs a bit. Um, to say that something is accessible doesn't mean that it lacks a kind of nuanced depth. And I see that in the work of, of Ellis Rooley. And I haven't seen too many cases in which work of this sort was welcomed during the course of a lifetime of the artist. The way that Ellis really uses paint, and considering that he invented that usage totally on his own, is totally awesome. I mean, it's a big surprise to those of us who have seen people study and learn how to mix paint, how to use paint, that this man was as comfortable as he was, and that all of his solutions work. I would say that, that he is an extraordinary and most amazing artist. Well, at that time, his uh, paintings were selling for $15 each. And uh, I went to New York and took some of his work, I would say about five or six of his paintings with me, and showed them to uh, my dealer, also several dealers on 57th Street, and no one at that time seemed to be interested in his work and they were not willing to handle his work. My only regret is that uh, Alice Rooley did not live to see the uh, acclaim that his work has received in the art world. The Rooley family members probably at the time of his death had no idea what art was. I mean, I think they're really gonna be honest with themselves and, I, and I'd have to, it's hard to know what, it's something a grandpa did. It was just, or, or something that an uncle did and it was just, you know, not necessarily important. It's, it's his work, you know, it's what he did. I value him as a person, so I value his work in terms of the contribution that he made to my life and to, to our family's life. And so it's something that he left. You know, it's something, it's, you know, it's like the, 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 the watch or like the, maybe that's how it could be perceived at that particular time. It's, it's, what, it's, it's what he left. I think Ellis Rooley's work moves on about three or four different levels at once. That on one hand, there's the simplistic one of just the paintings themselves. I think in another way, if you see art as a form of travel, of inner and outer travel, he was traveling through the society of the US at the time that he was making these paintings. So he was testing a lot of corners and he was testing a lot of edges in the sense of, um, of where he stood in relationship to the, to, the, to the overall society. And I think that maybe at one point, we'll stop seeing the Rulies for one thing and maybe appreciate them for the sheer pathos of his struggle and what it was he was trying to work out through the work and the fact that he could make this work at all in a society which was down on people like him making the work. But I think as you go on with the work, layers and layers of, 
of appreciation, the way you appreciate them change. The work has always been what it is. It's our looking at it that, that continues to metamorph. When you're black, they have to define you in soul or pop or something. They have to make different categories. They never let us compete on an on a open and fair playing field. So by separating us by this, they get, it's, a, it's a form of control. You know, that's, that's, that's the history of this country. It's about, that's just another way of control. I, I used to talk to Randall a lot, and I talk about it. They use language to control us. So by defining this art in terms that nobody understands, it's, it's, a, it's a way of controlling it. But he didn't have a dealer or a, a strong voice that was, that was supporting him. And the result was he was not valued by his community. And hence, he, he ended up dead. I'm almost certain that there must have been a lot more work uh, that was lost. Um, which then takes you back to a lot of what happened with this material and in part why it's so valued today. Uh, and that is that nobody did take it seriously. So we were lucky to be in the right place at the right time and to be able to pursue this work. And to, you know, I feel in the case of Ellis Rooley really helped save the work. Um, and you know, I'm very proud of that.